Okay, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on just uh, some of the basics on how to get started. Um, assuming you've registered your domain name and you're able to load your store into the browser, um, you simply just go to your URL and you won't see any of this stuff. This is, um, you'll, you'll just see pretty much a blank a white area right here because um, you don't have any products yet or anything. This is what we're wanting to do, right? So you're going to go log in and put in the credentials that you registered with. Um, some people, we're so used to just entering the answer or entering what we see for these, um, but this one goes a little, a little further and you actually have to do the math. So don't, like in this example, don't come down here and do 10 times 3. You want to actually just put in the answer, okay? And you'll log in. All right, now, now you're logged in. This has changed to my account, and then you, your name will be up here and whatnot. Um, if I've already done it, but first time you log in, you'll get a tour, a, a, just a quick tour of just a few things it'll tell you about. This will change over time as more and more features get added, but um, once you've done it once, it'll never come back. If you want to do it again, just click the little button right there. So now the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to go to store admin. And this is where all the magic happens. Um, so the first thing I would do is go over here to store information. Okay. And fill out this form. Anything with an asterisk is required. When you first sign up, um, and log in, a lot of this stuff won't be filled in. Um, I, very few things like store name and your, and, uh, uh, man, that might be it, honestly. Maybe, maybe your email will be pre-filled from when you register. Um, but you'll need to fill this out. Um, the short name, uh, it, right now the only place it's used is right here. Um, if you can see that. Um, but I can anticipate in the future um, any place where, you know, your full name wouldn't fit. You need an abbreviated version of it or whatever. Uh, that's where um, we'll be using that. Um, so it is required. Um, you can put whatever you want there, obviously. My store is LMI Firearms. It makes sense for me just to put LMI in there. Um, you might have to get creative. It, it's only eight characters, but, um, um, you know, but it needs to be short. Okay, so in any one of these pages where you see tabs, okay, the save button is per tab. So you can't make changes here and then go over here and click save and expect these to get saved. You have to click save before you go on to the next one. So um, fill in everything here that you want. Um, if there's an asterisk, it's required. Um, and then uh, click save, all right, and then go to the next tab. Um, this is just, um, if it was an error, this would be red and it would have um, some information in there. These disappear on their own. Takes, I don't know, a few seconds. All right. But if you're, if you're in a hurry and you want to get it out of your way, just click it and it'll go away. Okay. Financial info. This is where you put in your uh, credit card processor information and the payment methods you want to accept on your store. Um, down here you can put in, um, we got Blue Dog, eProcessing Network, and Authorize.net. Typically, um, almost every merchant account, credit card processor out there, um, if they don't use Authorize.net, they have an Authorize.net emulator. So if you don't use Blue Dog or eProcessing Network, but your, your merchant uh, processor, your credit card processor has an Authorize.net emulator, then you would choose that and fill it out accordingly. These are provided by your merchant account, by your credit card processor. You'll have to get that information from them. Any third party service um, will have, typically will have um, test credentials and live credentials. If you notice down here, it says testing mode. All transactions are fake. I don't know if you can see that. Um, 
when you see that that means your server your store is in testing mode and it would be using the test credentials um, when you turn testing mode off it's using live credentials in test mode everything is fake nothing is real you can use real credit card numbers um, whatever no um, no payments will be processed but it goes through um, the same process as if it were it just doesn't actually get um, your credit card doesn't actually get debited um, down here if, um, put in your restocking fee if you want if you uh, want to do that any state where you have to charge sales tax you would enter the percentages in here don't enter you know if it's five percent don't enter 0 0.05 enter the percent like in Arizona it's 8.25 percent that's all you got to do click save <coughs> shipping info if you're going even if you're not going to be printing labels and or if you're doing uh, flat rate shipping only or drop shipping only you you're going to need to sign up with easy post it's free unless you print labels um, using them is just um, it's a long story it, it it's shipping APIs the shipping companies are some of the worst um, programming uh, jobs there are uh, trying to communicate and read their documentation easy post handles all of that and it's one set of rules one set of calls to one central service and they communicate with UPS FedEx USPS they charge you three cents a label it's I mean it's really reasonable and if you're doing a hundred packages a, a day first of all congratulations but second of all it's only three dollars and it gives me plenty it gives me more time to work on the things that matter to you rather than figuring out why UPS's uh, crappy uh, back-end service is not working right and their documentation itself needs documentation it's 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 really kind of a mess so the reason why you need easy post <clears throat> is even if you're not printing labels even if you're not uh, doing any kind of shipping um, through uh, your website or whatever uh, it still uses easy post for some address validation stuff and whatnot it's free um, just go to easypost.com um, if you've got UPS FedEx or U USPS you enter when you sign up with easy post you enter your account numbers for each of them they'll give you an ID for each one of them <clears throat> and then you don't need all three just you just need one and, um, and you may not need any of them and if you're not printing labels I, I can't remember if they require that or not but if they do I mean it's free to sign up with either one of them uh, you're gonna have to ship something so you're, you're going to be using one of them. You just don't have to use it through Easy Post if you don't want to. But if you've got negotiated rates, they'll keep your rates because they're using your account on your behalf. And um, so it's really, it's, it's not a big deal. Again, they'll give you test credentials, live credentials. Down here, you pick the shipping methods from each one of these that you want to use. These are simply what is presented to the customer at checkout. Um, and uh, the system knows which one of these for example um, you can't ship handguns with UPS ground if there's a handgun in the shopping cart that won't be offered to the end user to the customer as an option for shipping method it, it, it knows which option which uh, methods um, can be used for um, you know shipping that is kind of a bad example because um, firearms uh, are is free shipping they're not really um, considered on the checkout system uh, ammunition would be a better one psych down here is ammunition you cannot ship ammunition through UPS standard so if someone puts you know some ammunition in their order and um, goes to checkout and you have this checked it will not list this as an option it will only list options that um, can be shipped uh, with ammunition the same on the back end when you if you got to go print a label 
and you create your and this, there'll be more of this on another video but it it doesn't let you choose shipping methods that that particular item or has items that won't uh, aren't allowed so that's a good thing right so if you're gonna do if you're gonna do shipping set these up um, if you're not gonna ship print sh uh, print your labels from here from your store or if you're just gonna do drop shipping or um, flat rate shipping still need to get an account at easy post and put your test and life credentials in there so you can do address validation site settings uh, this is pretty self-explanatory um, you know everybody's got to have a terms and conditions and a privacy statement these days here's your shipping terms that um, is uh, made available uh, in a couple of places there's uh, down here for example um, or uh, no not there actually I think it's up here well, actually, I don't remember. Um, you've got uh, the privacy statement. It should be down here. It's somewhere. I can't remember off the top of my head where they're at. Um, but there's the about us. Meta tags, <clears throat> that's basically for search engine uh, optimization and whatnot. Um, you'll want to give it a, a short little title. Um, a more descriptive description and a comma separated list of keywords that search engines should uh, index. These are all pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, if, if you got questions on these, anytime you see a little triangle, um, you hover over it and typically it says click for more info. If it's a real brief description, the, the little black box will be the actual description. So click on that. And it'll give you more information. Um, so here's your okay now 4473 kiosk. <clears throat> if you're going to be doing um, electronic 4473 forms, you do that, and there'll be another video on this later. But you do that through kiosk mode. That's for you know you can have a, a, a machine at your store or at a gun show or your tablet. <clears throat> you put your site into kiosk mode. <laughs> and you're able to um, basically hand it over to the customer for them to fill out their 44, their portion of the 4473. And then when they're done, it, it just goes back into kiosk mode. It, they can't get into your system in any way or whatnot, but you need a password to uh, use to enable kiosk mode. Obviously, you don't want uh, a customer or a user on the web to click on kiosk mode and, and go there and do it themselves. So that's what that is. All this stuff has explanations um, next to it, so that's not a big deal. Uh, Google API key. Every map on your store um, uses Google Maps. You'll need to get a Google Maps API key so that uh, your maps will render. I can't provide those. I mean, I could, but after 2,500 views or 2,500 requests to the API, um, they would start charging me. So um, everybody is responsible for their own Google API key. It's free up to 2,500 requests to that a day. What does that mean? If uh, you know, if if a map is generated from your website 2,500 times in a day, the very next one won't generate. And, and but chances are, unless your site is super busy, you're not going to have to worry about that for a while. And then once you start, if you start reaching or exceeding that threshold, uh, you can give Google billing information and they'll up that to, I think it's an insane amount, like 100,000 requests a day. So uh, you'll be all right. Third party code, anybody that, if you sign up with a service like an analytics service or a tracking service and they say, place this code on your website, that's where you do it, okay? Most of this stuff self-explanatory. Last but not least, badges. If you want any of these to show up at the bottom of your web page, just check them, and they'll they'll show up uh, down here. Okay. So that pretty much gets you started on um, on getting started, and um, we'll try to make some more videos uh, here in the near future on some of the next steps, like uh, importing and um, setting up your uh, your vendors to get products into your system. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me and uh, you know how to do it. So that'll do it for this one. Good luck.